I'm about to show you exactly how to create and how to set up an online calendar booking system for your business. The software we're gonna be using today is called Calendly. And to show you exactly how to set it up, I'm gonna go over to the computer. All right, so now I'm over on my computer. And to start off, you're gonna to wanna to go to calendly.com, as you can see spelled right here. And then once you're there, you'll see this plus button on the left, that's the create button. So we're gonna to wanna to create a new event and you're gonna select event type. Then after you select event type, I like to do a one-on-one -on -one meeting. That works best for me and I'm sure that would work best for most businesses out there. So we're gonna select that and then you should call this meeting exactly what the meeting is. So say you have a business and you want someone to book a quote with you. I would call the event get a quote or something along those lines. So for me, I'm just gonna call it a consultation. I'll say business diagnosis because what I do is I run paid advertisements for businesses. So that's what I'm going to call it because what I want to do is take a look at their business and explain to them what I do along with see if they're qualified for my services. For the duration, I'm going to select 45 minutes because that's a good amount of time for me to explain everything and see if the business is a good fit for us. So then the location, I'm going to do Google Meet because that's what I like to do personally. Now, if you do have a local business, you can hit in-person meeting and you can also adjust the color. If you have like many events, you can change the event color. So we're gonna hit continue and now my event type is ready. So what I'm gonna do now, if you go to event details, you can add a description or change any of the information you already put in, but I'm all set for now. And then when you go to host and invitees, it should be you, of course, because then when someone books a call, it'll send to your email along with go straight into your calendar, which is really cool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow my invitees to add guests. So if they want to share the meeting with other emails, then they can do that. Like say they have more people in their business that they have to talk to before they want to get my services they would add them to the call and then I would explain everything to all of them. Now we're gonna select our dates and times that were available. So go to scheduling settings. Right here is how far into the future people can schedule a time to meet with you. So this depends on your business model. I don't wanna to go too far into the future because I know if people book a meeting too far out, they'll either forget about it or they just won't show up in general. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do seven days because of course, this depends on your business model. So seven days into the future is what I'm going to go for. Then here are the days that you're actually available and you can choose the times. Now, I just sync this with my other event that I already have. So it already has my hours in here, which are all correct here. So I'm just going to save and close. And of course, you can also select the days that you're available. You can unselect these. And this right here is not custom hours. This is weekly hours. So of course, you're not always going to be available these times. You might be on a vacation or you might be sick and you can't take a meeting. Whatever the reason is, you don't want to select your hours here if you're busy one of the days because this will stay the same week after week. You can actually manually change what days you're not available, but this is in general week to week. So we'll save and close this. Then you can add buffer time which I'm not gonna do. And then this is, this right here, this is minimum notice. So this is the invitees can't schedule a date within a certain amount of time. So for example, if on Calendly, it says I'm available the next hour, and then someone books the meeting within like 10 minutes of the meeting, I won't be prepared for it. So for me, I'm gonna select within five hours is a good time. So that means say right now is five o'clock, they won't be able to schedule a meeting until 10 o'clock because I need a five hours notice. You can set a daily limit here of how many meetings you want booked. I'm gonna just allow all the meetings I can get. So for the time zones, since it's an online meeting, they can select their time. So say for me, I'm on the East Coast and I'm available at 3 p.m. On the West Coast, 3 p.m. would be 12 o'clock. So 12 o'clock is when they can start booking meetings. So they'd be able to book a meeting for 12 o'clock their time, which of course will still be three o'clock my time. So then I'm gonna save and close this, and then I'm going to go to the booking page options. So this is where we can get their name, email, allow them to add guests if they need. And then this is also where you can put in the questions. So after they select a date and time, there's gonna be a list of questions that you can ask them before they complete the booking page. So for me, 
I'm going to ask for their name and email. What I'm going to do here is add another question and it's going to be for their phone number. So I want them to provide their phone number so that I can call them or give them messages. So I'm just going to say phone number. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that a required question. So if they don't answer this question, then they cannot submit the form. And what you can do on the side here is see these six dots. What you can do is click on them and drag them into the place that you want them to be. And I actually want the phone number to be right after the name, email, and the add guest option. So after this, I'm going to add some questions. Now, this is a question that Calendly automatically provides, but I'm going to change this. So what I'm going to say here is, what is your business's website URL? Then instead of multiple lines, it just needs to be one line. And I'm going to require it. All right, then I'm going to add another question. And this question here is going to be a multiple choice. So go to check boxes, and then what we'll do is I want to know what is their uh, monthly recurring revenue. And I'm going to require this one as well. All right, so I just added all the questions that I needed. And another option that you can do here is you can either display the Calendly confirmation page or you can redirect to a external site. So this could be your website or any other site that you'd want to redirect them to after they finish booking. So now I'm going to hit save and close. Now this right here, I'll show you how it shows up now. So if we hit copy link, this is how it would show up to other people. So what they could do is select a date and time. Again, I have seven days into the future that they can book a time. Say they want next Friday. Here's all the times that I'm available. And then 3 p.m., they hit next. And once they click on name, if they have auto-filled information already registered into their device, it'll automatically fill up here. So that's a good thing to have. And then they add their email. Again, they can add other emails, which would add other guests to the meeting. And then their website URL, all my questions here. And then what they do is hit schedule event. And then after that, you'll receive an email to confirm the meeting. So then the last thing that we can do here is communications so what this does is it gives them email and text reminders and follow-ups after they book the appointment now this is the only thing that's not in the free version so you'd have to pay the ten dollars a month if you want to get these options but it is very useful and I do recommend it so for email reminders you can select the time so it could either remind them a day before an hour before 30 minutes before and I would suggest doing at least three reminders per person. Or you could just continue with the free version and manually do this for each of your meetings. So if you want to check out the link to my actual Calendly booking page, the link is in the description and in the comments. And if you are a business owner looking to scale your business with paid advertisements, you can book a call and see if we're a good fit for your business. So that's going to be the end of this video. Again, I hope you found some very useful information and I'll see you in the next one.